going back to our Bible ages that we looked at in class with the um, lifespan versus the generation versus lifespan. And I have omitted everything through Noah, so this would all be considered post-flood. So it's generations 11 through 23. And if you don't have it in your calculator anymore, that's okay. I just want to walk you through this process so you can kind of see what you would do using, using logarithms. So on the ladder of power, this would be at um, the, the zero step where we're going to use the logarithms. So what, I'm, what I would do in this particular example, again, remember the goal. You look at the data, you look at the raw data. Notice there's a slight curve here. Then when you do, like if I did regression, remember that you might get a value of R that seems very strong. That doesn't mean it's appropriate. You have to check the scatter plot. When you see a curve, then you do regression and then you check your residual plot. And there seems to be a kind of a curved pattern in my residual plot. So um, since, the residuals show a pattern, a linear model is not appropriate. Okay, so then what you do is you try and find something to straighten the data. So I'm what I'm going to show you next, and I kind of already did all the commands. I went over to my L3, so you're going to go over to, um, and you have to be highlighted on the L3. And then down below, I typed in log of L2. Now, I could have done natural log. I chose to do log. The only difference that's going to make is what I do to undo my equation. So if I'm using common log, then I'm going to exponentiate with a base of 10. If I had used natural log, then I would exponentiate with a base of E. It doesn't matter what you choose. So then when I did that, it filled in this column for L3. Then this scatter plot, and I didn't put my commands in there, but this is um, generation along the x-axis. That was my explanatory. And this is log of age was my y-axis. So it took the log, the logarithm of those values. And so now when I look at this, it appears to be straighter. So here's this compared to this one where you see more of a curve. And this one you can see, it looks like it straightened it. So then I did regression. And notice my value of r is stronger than it was here. It is stronger, but that's not enough. It's nice to know, especially if I've looked at my graph and think, okay, it looks it looks straighter. And then I look at my value of R. But I still have to do um, a, a, a residual plot. So here's my residual plot. Now, you might look at it and say, well, maybe I still see a, a little bit of a pattern. But I can't really predict. I had some above the line. I have this one below the line. I don't know what's coming next. I can't really make a prediction. Whereas up here... I, it, it looked a little bit more like it was starting off high, came down below, was going back up, but, but I'm not seeing that in here. So this is better, not a clear pattern. Remember, no model is perfect. So linear, um, I don't want to call that a linear model. So this model seems appropriate. But what is the model? What's my equation? So that depends on what you did to your data. I did log of my y value or my age. So I did log of age, and this would be the hat because that's my predicted, just like we had a y hat. Um, so log of age hat equals um, my um, intercept is 3.3143. You want to go more decimal places, especially when you're de when you're doing things with logs, um, because you can just if you don't go if you just went to a 3.3, you're going to lose a lot of accuracy when you do your predictions. So you're better off the less you round, the better. Minus 0 0.0545 because that's my slope. And then we had generation here. So say I wanted to predict um, the, well, I'm just going to use, I'm going to, well, 
how about if we just did the 24th generation? So that's a tiny bit of extrapolation because our data went through the 23rd generation. So say we wanted to know what would be the predicted, um, the predicted age. So we want to find predicted age for the 24th generation. So I'm going to take log age hat equals 3.3143 minus 0 0.0545 times 24. So when I do that, I get that my log age hat equals 2.0063. Now, obviously, that's not the age, but we need to undo log of age. So it's, it's, it was a log base 10 is common log. So to undo log, we exponentiate with a base of 10. So I have to take 10 raised to this power. And I'm just going to go, well, I may as well type it in. and I get that the predicted age would be 100, approximately 101 years. Now, that's extrapolation. It, it's really only one year out. Obviously, we don't want to do something where we're going to predict the 50th generation because eventually you're going to have people, you know, they. It, it, it's never going to be zero because we're dealing with this exponential um, and, and logs, but but you're going to end up with some you know crazy answers. So you don't want to extrapolate because we learned about that in chapter nine. Um, but that's what you have to do. So you so again the goal if the data is not if your original data is not straight, you find something mathematically that you can do to straighten the data. Sometimes you have to log the x's and log the y's, and we'll look at an example um, like that in class. Um, next time we meet, but but I just wanted to show you one here. I log the Y's, so when I'm done with my answer and when I want to make a prediction, I have to undo logging, which means I have to exponentiate with the base of 10. So you always have to undo something so you can use that model that you have created. This is problem number one on page 238. And I know in the assignment that I'm going to be giving you, you are going to be doing a similar problem to this. You're going to be doing number two. So um, what we're asked to do, and there is no context to this, this is just practicing the, the mechanics. So we need to predict the y value when x equals 2. So for this first one, I'm, it, it is a white hat value. It's already just solved for y. So I'm just going to take 1.2 plus 0.8 times 2, and I get 2.8. So for part B, um, and notice when I plug in the 2, I, I still have 2.8 for each time. Well, not the last one. So I'm going to get ln y hat equals 2.8. But I need to undo natural log. To undo natural log, you exponentiate with a base of e. And then I undo the natural log, so I get y hat. So I'm going to have to do e raised to the 2.8 power, and I get 16.445. For the next one, um, I plug in a 2, which we've already found the value. So we get the square root of y hat equals 2.8. I need to undo square rooting, so I square both sides, and I'll get y hat equals. So all we're practicing is that process of undoing. So for the next one, plug in a 2, I get 1 over y hat equals 2.8, and then I need to do the reciprocal of that, so then y hat equals 1 over 2.8, um, you can do 1 divided by 2.8, but in case you didn't know, if you go 2.8 and you hit this x to the minus 1 key, that does the inverse. So we get 0.357. And for this last one, um, notice it's already solved for y hat. So I'm just plugging in a 2. 1.2 times 2 to the 0.8.
and I get that y hat is approximately 2.089. So again, no context to that. Um, once This just helps you know, once you've created a model, how what would you do to 